Hi, I'm Jana from How to Enjoy Wines and we are going to talk about fortified wines. Fortified wines can seem confusing, but if you know a few simple facts, you can identify what style of wine you're going to get and, crucially, use the label to make sure you get just the one you want. So the key with fortified wines is they are fortified with the spirit. It's a way of preserving wine. It's been used for hundreds of years by all the main uh, wine growing areas. So we've got Spain, we've got Portugal, we've got France, we've even got Australia. And the crucial thing about it is that all of these wines have higher al alcohol than normal wines. So, but we're talking about 15 to 22 percent, that kind of that kind of area. So we're not talking the 40 percent that you would get with a gin. Um, now they're not all sweet. Some people they are think they are. You get dry right through into super lusciously sweet. And the key to them to understanding what it's going to taste like is how it's been matured. The grape varieties have some factor in it, but maturation is really key with these. And whether it's matured in the presence of oxygen or oxygen's been excluded. In the presence of oxygen is the easiest one to remember because there you're looking at toffee, chocolate, caramel, dry fruit and nuts. Those are the key flavours that you get with those types of wine. Okay, well let's start and have a look at the different types of fortified wines. Madeira, a Portuguese island, and the story behind Madeira is uh, Madeira wines are fantastic. So these were wines that were uh, made from the indigenous grapes of the island and still are. Um, they were fortified because they were going to be transported across the world, and this was five, six hundred years ago. They were put in big barrels in the ship's hold and they were transported across the tropics. They were moved all around in storms, lots of oxygenation happened. And what you got wines that were had that wonderful toffee, chocolate, caramel, uh, dried fruits and nuts. But caramel is the dominant in when when you sniff your sniff in a Madeira and were a revelation to me when I first started studying fortified wines. I absolutely loved them. Um, but they're quite nuanced. So the ones that are um, single variety, so Cerciel, it's one of those Madeira uh, varieties I mentioned, Verdeo, there's Boal, and this is Malvasia, sometimes called Malmsey. Um, and these are the individual grapes. And these vary from off dry right through to sweet and start off um, uh, Cerciel is sort of grapefruit and lime, lime cordial. You get to marmalade, you get through to sort of a ginger cake. Um, and by the time you get to Malvasia, you're into sticky toffee pudding. Um, you also get blends and um, you'll see these. And on the label, it usually tells you how they've been made, to what style. And this one is rich. So they always give you a hint of how they make them. So that's you're getting into your sticky toffee pudding. You're particularly getting into Christmas pudding type flavors. Um, and these will be sweet by the time you get up to this end. So these are wines, they're oxidized. Let's move on to port. So with port, we are still in Portugal, except we're in mainland Portugal now. And ports can seem really, really confusing because there are so many labeling terms. So the key to understand it and the key to just um, be able to go, aha, that's what that's going to taste like is to think of tawny port. Now you'll see regular tawny port, you'll see aged tawny port, um, 10 years, 20 years we've got here. Um, and the key is tawny ports are ones that have been aged with oxygen. So again, you're back to your toffee, your chocolate, your caramel, um, your dried fruits and your dried nuts. Now, these are all made with indigenous um, grape varieties from Portugal. Um, the one you may well hear most of is Toriga Nacional. Um, these are really, really good grape varieties. You, you get red fruits and black fruits, um, but with the tawny ports, those, those caramelized um, flavors are the ones that really dominate and make a really, really delicious wine. Um, even tasted, it's slightly chilled is a really nice way to have it. Now, 
The, all the other styles, um, I'll come back to white port in a second, but all the other styles are really to do with excluding oxygen from the maturing process. And it, that is done by putting it in a bottle, stoppering it, and then letting it mature in the bottle. Um, so t only a tiny amount of oxygen may go in through the cork, but nothing to speak of. And basically these type of wines are based on the um, black red fruits that I was speaking about. So a standard ruby port, um, you are getting stewed fruits maybe. You might get a bit into dried fruits when you get to reserve ruby, um, but really you're talking about stewed red and black fruits. Then you get into, and this is where it starts to get really confusing. This is a late bottled vintage, unfiltered. You get late bottled vintage port filtered. You get um, uh, vintage ports. And the key, the, I suppose the top of the heap are the vintage ports because not every year you will get a vintage. So it's only where it's a particularly good year and uh, for and each individual producer decides if their plots have produced the best in that year and therefore they say, right, 2005, this is a vintage. So these are the top ones. Now, what happens as these age without oxygen is you get much more savoury and earthy flavours. I have to say that was the reason I thought I didn't like port. So the other thing about ports is they are all sweet um, and they tend to be the high end of the alcohol. So they're like 18, 19, often up to 22%. Now, what about white port? Now, these are made with, again, grapes of the uh, local grapes. They can be aged in oxygen or they can be unaged, in which case they're much more to do with the fruit flavors. Um, so things like peach and, and those kind of flavors. And, um, but if it's aged, then you start to get things like dried fruits like sultanas. You might get some nuttiness, some almond. Um, so they can actually be really delicious um, cocktail. Um, uh, parts for a cocktail. Right, so we've done port, we're going to move away from Portugal and now let's go to Spain. Okay, so let's go to Spain and to Sherry. And um, the key to Sherry, well one of the fundamentals about Sherry is it's dry. It is the fortified wine that is dry and um, particularly Oloroso, Amontillado and Fino. And um, the key to understanding these, the great variety that, that is used has, really doesn't have much flavour. So all of the flavours for sherry come from, and these types of sherries come from how it's matured, whether it's matured with oxygen or completely excluding oxygen. So let's start with Oloroso because it's the one that's matured in the presence of oxygen. So it's going to be the easiest one for us to understand. So we're talking about, it's the same again. It's your toffee, your chocolate, your caramel, your dried fruits and your um, nuts. And that's what an Oloroso sherry, but remember it is dry. It is not sweet. Uh, you can also get it aged. So this is a 12 year old and the, if it's aged, it will be better quality because they'll use the better grapes. Now let's go to Fino. So Fino is fascinating because it is uh, matured without any um, oxygen at all. But the way the oxygen is excluded is really quite unique. It's called the Celera system and um, it's using floor, which is yeast cells, so like a thick coat of yeast cells. You've got these big barrels, you've got your dry uh, sherry, your dry wine, you fortified it and you've got this thick layer of what they call floor. Now it's yeast, so think bread. So they, they, some of the flavours that you get are slightly doughy, but in the main what you get is bruised fruit. You get hay, you get chamomile. Um, I get something that's a bit balsamic about it. Not vinegar, but the, the, there's a sort of earthiness about it. Um, it's it's um, um, not everybody likes it, it's fair to say, it's not my favourite um, and I think it's one of the reasons that a lot of people are put off sherry because they think of it in terms of that. Um, Amontillado is a cross between them all. So an Amontillado starts life as a phenol, so without oxygen and getting those flavours and then oxygen is allowed in 
and then it gets some of those toffee chocolate and those type of flavors. So it's a blend between the two. So these are all completely dry. You do get sweet cherries, you get sweetened cherries. So what that is, is they will add a sweetener. Um, great um, juice quite often, at, um, so a fino, they sweeten it and it becomes pale cream sherry. Amontillado, they sweeten it, becomes a medium sherry. Oloroso, they sweeten it, and becomes a cream sherry. Now there is one naturally sweet um, uh, sherry and it's called Pedro Jimenez uh, PX. And this is amazing. The Pedro Jimenez is the grape variety. It's allowed to shrivel, so it's a bit like raisin. And then you um, make wine from it. And it is super, super sweet. I mean, it's lusciously sweet. And it is basically like drinking Christmas pudding. You can't have too much of it. And I thoroughly recommend it on ice cream rather than having it any other way because that freshens it up a bit. So that's Spain. Right, so we've talked about Portugal, we've talked about Spain, but there's lots of other countries that make fortified wines. Um, France, Italy, even Australia. And I'm gonna just pick out two that are just standout wines for me. The first is France, and these are made, they're made over quite a few different regions of France, but these are particularly from the Rhone Valley. And this is a Bon de Venise. And it is an absolutely delicious, much lighter, still sweet, um, but you're talking about dried um, orange peel, it's quite floral on the nose, you've got honeysuckle, um, absolutely delicious sweet fortified wines, really flexible, really wonderful with a dessert, um, with a meringue based, a fruit based dessert, great in cocktails and a wonderful substitute for G in G and T and lower alcohol in a G and T. Right, so let's go to Australia. And this was such a revelation to me when I first started studying fortified wines. It's called Rutherglen Muscat. It's made in Rutherglen in Victoria. And this is another fortified wine that is all about oxygen. So again, you've got your toffee, your chocolate, your caramel, your dried fruits and your nuts. But this is made from a Muscat variety uh, of grape so again you've got the aromatics you've got the wonderful peachy you've got uh, citrus peel you've got a really delicious mix of flavors as well as those oxidized flavors those caramels and those toffees and it's also quite highly high in acid and what that means is it's really refreshing so these are super lusciously sweet wines that it doesn't feel as clawing in the mouth because that acidity stops it being clawing. Absolutely delicious dessert wine. So you can learn a lot more information about all these different types of wines at howtoenjoywine.com and I'm Jana. Thank you.